today's video I just wanted to show you my new mobile solar array. Let's get to it. This is my new mobile solar array. I've had about six weeks. Um, I looked around the internet and a lot of YouTubers and looked at all the different designs and I settled on this design. I like this design very well. It's actually uh, was done by a YouTuber named Jason, Jason Noid. You know, did a good job. Uh, mine, built mine slightly different. Uh, his, his is a little bit shorter uh, base on the bottom. I, I, I use the full eight foot four by four posts. I installed these four Bourgeois V 200 watt nine bus bar solar panels on uh, for a total of 800 watts. And at times I'm getting uh, up to 900 watts. I'm really happy and love these panels. Here's uh, the back side of the solar array. As you can see, I've, uh, I'll go to the details later, but I used uh, two eight foot four before posts and a couple two befores, and then the Bourgeois V tilt mount, which I'll go over in a second. And I ran the wires through this conduit I buried here on the front of my porch and over to the garage. So I didn't have to worry about, you know, mowing around it. Some of the benefits to having a uh, mobile solar array like this, well, first it's mobile. Uh, it's easy to adjust the angle to the sun for optimum sun by season or month. Uh, no getting on the roof, it's easy to work on. I can turn it during the day if I feel like it and to get the, you know, the most power out of the sun. Uh, in the winter, I can move it up close to the house because the, the sun only gets low in the sky and these trees start blocking it. I considered putting mulch underneath uh, to keep, you know, I thought maybe the grass might die and mud would splash up underneath the bottom. So I, I was going to put mulch and I thought, well, this is mobile, so it's going to be moving around a lot. And I'm going to be, uh, you know, having just a patch of uh, mulch sitting there. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. I, I moved the uh, solar array up maybe five feet and, and let the sun hit that grass. And then a few days later, I moved it back. And I still keep the grass alive under it. I think that works that works best for me one concern with a mobile array like this is for me anyway in the area i live in i get quite a bit of winds severe thunderstorms so uh, i was worried that it would flip over now i did add up the weight for this and it comes to about 180 pounds so that's hard to flip that over but uh, and, I, and i created the wider base to keep it you know harder harder to lift it so and if you see these loops here uh I drive these little T-posts in the ground. I'll show how to do that in a minute. But I drive these T-posts in the ground and uh, hook it to those posts during whenever there's high winds uh, expected. I do have this fence and it's up close to my porch and house. So I, it's partially protected already from the wind, but I believe the T-post gives it that extra support needed in the case, uh, you know, like we had 75 mile an hour winds recently. So I believe we needed it for that. Here I am putting the uh, teeth post in the paracord loop I made to support the solar panels from wind. Uh, I'm just going to take a five pound hammer and I pound it in the ground uh, deep enough to where it would uh, hold and I can still get it out of the ground. But for this demonstration, I didn't hammer it all the way down. I just hammered it in a little bit to show how I do this. And here I am on, on the other side and I keep, I keep the paracord kind of tight just a little bit to where it, it just gives it that added support in high winds. Let's talk a little about the build. So as I mentioned previously, we got two four by eight posts. I didn't cut them, I left them full eight feet. I've got two two by fours and I cut them in half and put one half at the end, another half there. And then I used the other halves of the two by fours to, to mount the uh, Bougier V tilt bracket there. The wheels are eight inch wheels from Harbor Freight. I think they were around $7. I'll list out the price in a little bit. But I believe they're solid rubber. Uh, they don't have to inflate them, so they will go flat. And I put washers on either side of the wheel, and I used this seven-inch, half-inch uh, zinc-coated lag screw to go all the way into through the two before and into the post. I didn't put the extra supports on like Jason Oid did. I don't feel like it's needed, but if it ever starts getting loose, I will add those. And it's the same on all four corners. This is a solar panel mount. Uh, that you can easily adjust. It's actually, there's two, it comes in a pair and it's meant for just one panel, but you can, I've got all four of these mounted using the aluminum angles I'll talk about in a minute, but it's, it's easily adjustable. Uh, it, 
this this array's pretty heavy so i'll put a two before underneath each each side and kind of help support it while i'm adjusting it that that helps but i'm um, surprisingly that these things are very sturdy uh, they're very good i'm really happy with them to determine the optimal angle i'll put a link to a website below where you can put in your zip code and it'll give you the best angle to mount these panels and by month and by season and uh there's an actually a mobile app uh i'll i'll put a link below as well that you can go use it's an app that actually calculates the angle you just lay your phone on the uh, solar panel and it shows you the angle which is really nice the booger v mount i'm connected it to the panels and connected the panels together using this aluminum angle it's actually a very sturdy angle i got four screws on each panel holding it together using stainless steel bolts uh, nuts and lock washers to its top to at the bottom and they hold surprisingly this is very sturdy the aluminum angles i got from home depot they're around 48 dollars each which are very expensive so i needed two of them they're one and a quarter inch and one eighth inch thick and full eight foot long with this design you can actually fit different size panels you could probably fit 100 watt panels just fine and uh, maybe even bigger than 200 watt i did use this wire loom for a, an added bit of protection i probably didn't need it uh, just in case i was to hit it with a weed eater, a weed eater or something in my particular installation i i had like 80 feet to the garage so i opted for eight gauge pv wire to, for less power loss as i expand my system i plan on building another one of these it's going to get a little crowded out here uh, but i may put it at the top of the yard and get some evening sun i'm not really sure yet uh, but as i expand i'll need more i'll need more uh, watts coming in here i am showing how i can push it forward pretty easily and then pull it back uh, turning can be a little bit of a challenge uh, the wheels kind of sometimes wedge and, and it's hard it makes it a little hard but it's not it's not too bad here's the cost breakdown of just the base not including the solar panels or the wire as you see it comes to 236.57 i think uh, if you had filmed this a year ago it would be quite a bit cheaper but that's the price as it is today well that's going to do it for this video i hope you got something out of it if you did and you enjoyed it please like and subscribe to the channel because it helps motivate me to make more of these and it helps out the channel too so thanks for watching